Bill, another big issue the new board will have to tackle is bilingual education. The L.A. County Grand Jury released a report yesterday accusing the district of violating Proposition 227. Prop 227, as you recall, bans bilingual education in public schools. The report warned that the LAUSD is risking legal action by continuing to teach some children in Spanish and by encouraging parents to ask for waivers, waivers that allow children to stay in bilingual classes. Here now to help us sort out this report are uh, Hector Viagra, who is an attorney specializing in education issues for MALDEF, that's the Mexican-American Legal Defense and Educational Fund. Also with us, Ron Unz, one of the co-authors of Prop 227, the ballot measure, of course, which banned bilingual education in California schools. Welcome both of you to Life and Times tonight. Kind of a surprise, uh, Hector Viagra from the grand jury today. Yes, it is something of a surprise, but what it makes clear is just how ambiguous the law is and just how unworkable it is. There's any number of interpretations that you can give to it, and the uh, grand jury has given its interpretation. We just don't think it's an appropriate body to be telling school districts what to do. Here's the grand jury saying that the district is not implementing it enough. You have a lawsuit at MALDEF against the district for what you regard as, as excessive impl implementation, if that's an appropriate term. Well, for the fact that it is implementing a law that which all. we believe is illegal. Yeah. Ron, I assume that you agree with the grand jury's basic message, which is the spirit or the will of the voters is being violated because of taking advantage of loopholes or abusing loopholes? It's not in so much loopholes, it's really direct violation. First of all, our initiative has now been upheld by four federal judges, including mm -hmm. two members of the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. It is the law of the land in Los Angeles and in California, and it should be enforced. And how is it being violated? Well, it's very simple. Just in fact, uh, one school I'm just using an example is a school in my own neighborhood where I grew up, which is mm -hmm. North Hollywood. In that school, Fair, uh, Fair Avenue Elementary, the classes are still being taught predominantly in Spanish. Now, the initiative allows parents who want to place or keep their children in a bilingual program to apply for a waiver to do so. The waiver provision is part of the initiative. But I'm not talking here about parents who have applied for waivers. I'm talking about parents whose children are in English immersion classes. The initiative says English immersion classes have to be nearly all in English and Fair Avenue has them primarily in Spanish. How can that be? Why is that? It's illegal. <laughs> That's but, the point. <laughs> but my understanding is that there's this option called Model B, which in fact does allow Spanish to be used as a kind of safety net by bilingual teachers, even though the majority well, of the class is taught in English. Is this the ambiguity English. that you were talking about? Yes. It actually doesn't say nearly all. It says overwhelmingly in it, English. And that's can, one of the problems is who knows what overwhelmingly means. But let me inter uh, interrupt you both and, and uh, let our listeners and our viewers know this. The district has faxed a response to the grand jury's report on Prop 227, and it refers specifically to this Model B program, which allows teachers in some instances to use the student's native language. Here's what it says. The response says Model B was designed to use the minimum amount of primary language instruction that the district in its judgment deems necessary to prevent English learners from incurring academic deficits. Is that clear? Well, I, I don't know about the district's interpretation, but the actual law itself says nearly all in English. And in the school I'm talking about, the reports I've received are that it's nearly all in Spanish with minimal use of English. I think that's an absolutely clear violation Where of the are you getting these reports? Mm -hmm. Well, from teachers and parents. I believe the grand jury drew their conclusions from interviews with, exactly. with teachers and visits to unspecified schools. Mm -hmm. um, but Mr. Viagra, is you don't see this as a violation. You actually say that the, the, the classes that are being offered that use Spanish as a supportive mechanism are completely within the, the rights and the bounds of Proposition 227? Well, I'm unfortunately not here to defend what the school district is doing. Not when I have a lawsuit again. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not. But one of the things we do point out is that the statute does allow for some native language instruction to be used. The school board uh, the State Board of Education has issued regulations specifying how much native language instruction can be used, and that's what's being done. Uh, and I just don't know that the grand jury, uh, lacking the expertise in this area, is the body that should be telling school districts what to do. Back to Mr. Unz, we have here a news release from the uh, school district, and uh, they're saying that uh, they feel that they are implementing the uh, proposition as it has been written, that they're not encouraging anybody to, uh, or discouraging, for, to uh, apply for waivers if in fact enough parents apply for waivers 
then wouldn't that necessarily lead to the use of a much greater uh, uh, of Spanish, much more than, than otherwise. Absolutely. Waivers are a legal part of the initiative. And okay. right now, in Los Angeles Unified School District, somewhat under 10% of the parents have applied for waivers. Mm -hmm. Waivers, I think, are misguided, but they're certainly legal. I'm not talking about students whose parents applied for waivers here. I'm talking about students who legally should be in English immersion programs because their parents did not apply for a bilingual waiver, and the programs are almost entirely in Spanish. Actually, I think the number of students that are, we're talking about here in this Model B is about 117,000 exactly. students, so it's a good number and of students. And none of the parents, none of those students' parents had applied for waivers. One thing that will be interesting will be to see how the students in schools with a lot of Model B programs in L.A. perform on these tests coming out in a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. as opposed to students in Model A or in straight English. And I think if the Model B programs show themselves to be much less successful for the students, I think Model B should be eliminated. What about that, uh, uh, Mr. Viagra? Do you feel that the tests will, in fact, settle the issue? Uh, would, is there any chance that, that the Maldives would withdraw its suit if uh, the test results came out one way or the other? No, no. Uh, if I could make one point about the waivers, though, one thing to note about the grand jury report is that it does recommend the school district discourage parents from using waivers. And I, just like Mr. Unz to, to state, uh, as he said, that waivers are a legal part of the statute and parents have a right to them and they shouldn't be discouraged from exercising that right. Mm -hmm. When it comes to test scores, right now uh, the, the whole arena is in a, in a state of complete flux. The scores are being questioned right now. When they do come out, it's going to be very difficult to assess how much of uh, any increase or decrease is, is attributable to the uh, immersion program of Proposition 227 or to other programs like Back to Basics and the smaller classroom sizes. We have another guest that uh, is going to join us, David Tukovsky, uh, from the uh, school board. And while he is being seated, uh, one of the issues that the um, grand jury raised uh, is that uh, if, in fact, uh, Prop 227 is not being appropriately enforced, uh, the district then uh, will open itself to suits of a different kind uh, from uh, Maldives and uh, create a situation where there may be uh, liability on the part of, of the district. David Tukovsky, uh, we're glad to see you and, and thank you uh, uh, for joining us. Uh, are you concerned about that? Uh, as a result of the grand jury's report, uh, do you think that the board is going to have to take another look at the implementation of Prop 227? Well, we will certainly uh, visit the topic uh, with legal counsel immediately. I've been concerned, and first of all, I want to apologize that nobody from the Division of Instruction from the superintendent on down chose to come to be on the show, and I think that is a horrible mistake because if we believe we have a program of instruction that we are delivering, it should be stated here on the show. Mm. Uh, I have always been concerned about instruction and particularly Plan B. From both points of views that uh, you've, you've heard here, um, there aren't proper textbooks in the classrooms. Uh, Meaning that the textbooks are in Spanish instead of in English, is that correct? Too many if in If they have books, yes, they are probably still uh, primarily in Spanish. The that was one have, of the grand jury's points. The teachers have been saying that the science and the social science books um, are still fundamentally in Spanish. We have worked on changing the, the language acquisition text from Spanish to English, and we've done a fairly good job. Some of the companies have done a one-for-one -one trade. Um, but... Um, I think there's a large number of uh, emergency credentialed teachers in, in our classrooms, and particularly in, in the elementary school. And without the proper materials and a beginning teacher, it's a formula for difficult. We're just about out of, out of time. Are you conceding that the district is not implementing Prop 227? Is there potential liability if that's true? Well, let me broaden the subject as we end. I think the district is not implementing instruction for all students. And this is a particularly interesting uh, and a polemic uh, part of that failure. Mr. Unz, lawsuit from you if in fact uh, the grand jury turns out to be right? Well, the people have the strongest legal standing to sue are the parents. And in fact, they can sue and hold administrators or other officials legally and personally liable if their children's education is being harmed by violations of the law. Mr. Ragger, quick final, what's the next step for Maldives? We'll continue to monitor how the English learners are doing in learning English and in their academic progress and we'll act accordingly. Gentlemen, thank you all very much for being with us. David Dukowski, a board member of the LA Unified School District, Ron Unz of English for the Children, Hector Viagra from Maldorf, uh, Maldef, rather, excuse me. Thank you all for being with us today.